Hi, I'm Nate. And I'm Charity. And, and welcome, welcome to Hope Kids. Kids. Sister Gail is going to open us up in prayer today. Take it away, Sister Gail. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you so much for taking care of us and our families and keeping all of us well and healthy, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you walk beside us. Thank you for this day. Thank you so much, Nate. Thank you so much, Lord, that you take care of everything that we can think of, Lord. And Lord, bless our hearts. Bless the message today that we would understand. Take it with us. And Lord, bless our brother Nate. In Jesus' name, thank you for each of us. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Charity, 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 charity. Hi, Jehoshaphat. What's up? Something amazing just happened. Oh, yeah? Tell me about it. Well, I was at my house, and my brother was being a real meanie. A real meanie? Yeah, just a class A meanie. Oh, my. And uh, I was about to say something mean back, but just then, a Bible verse popped into my head. Oh, yeah? What Bible verse? It was Proverbs 15.1. It says, A gentle answer turns anger away, but mean words stir up anger. So, what did you do? Well, I decided to do what the Bible verse said, and I spoke kindly to him instead of being mean back. And it was just like the Bible said. We were both able to calm down and work it out. Wow, Jehoshaphat, I'm glad to hear that. And way to be obedient to what the Bible said. Thanks, Charity. You know, the Bible is such a great teacher. The Bible actually says that it can help us be equipped or prepared for anything. And in today's Power Verse, we're actually going to learn about how the Bible says it can help us be prepared for any situation. So let's turn our attention to Nate for our Power Verse today. Okay. Our Power Verse today is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. We're going to do some motions, so why don't you stand up on your feet and get ready to get moving. Don't feel bad if your high kick isn't as good as, as, as high as mine. Let's do some motions. As usual, let's start with this. Open up your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is God breathed. That's our first motion. God breathed as if the words are coming out of his mouth. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching. Point behind you like you're pointing to a whiteboard. It's useful for teaching, rebuking. That means when you have to correct somebody. Rebuking, correcting as if you're correcting a piece of paper or a, a homework at school. Teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training. Like you're training for a marathon. Start running in place. <clears throat> All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God for a servant, we're going to go down on one knee like we're lifting a platter of food up to the king. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped. Equipped means you have all your equipment. You have all your armor or your tools. So we're going to do this. Equipped, like you're holding all of your armor and tools. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. And I want to make this last move robotic. Because we were just here, thoroughly equipped. For every good work. Thumbs up. Good works. All right, let's see if we can do the whole thing together from the beginning. I'll do it twice. <clears throat> Second Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Nice. Let's do it one more time together. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
Great job. God breathed. Do you know what that means? That means that the Bible is God's very own words. It's God breathed. Another translation of our power verse says that all scripture is inspired by God. The Bible wasn't just a book that people wrote down. It's not just a bu bunch of stories that men and women wrote down. It's actually God's own words. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter that the Bible uh, wasn't written just by people, but men wrote from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. That means that the Holy Spirit showed people what to write, and then people wrote it down. God's word is amazing. The Bible is God's own word. It's God breathed. Our power verse tells us that God's word can make us ready for every good work. And it lists a few things God's word is useful for. The first one on the list is teaching. God's word can teach us what to do. Um, a lot of times in my life when I've had to make a big decision, the Holy Spirit will remind me of a scripture verse that I've read before. I remember one time I was about to make a big decision and the Holy Spirit reminded me of the verse Proverbs 24 6 that says, don't go to war without wise guidance. Victory depends on having many advisors. And I knew right away that God was telling me that I needed to seek wise advice from people like my pastor and my parents. So I did just that. And God helped me make the right decision. Our power verse also says that God's word is useful for correcting and rebuking. That's when it has to show us that we did something wrong so that we can make it right. There was one time when I was listening to my friend tell a story, and before they had even finished telling the story, I thought what they were saying was silly, so I told them what I thought, and it was rude, and I kind of hurt our friendship a little bit, but I didn't even realize right away because I thought what I said was right, and then just a few minutes later, I was reading my Bible, and I read in Proverbs 18, 13, where it says, if one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. That's exactly what I had just done. I didn't even finish hearing their story before I gave my answer. And, uh, and it hurt our friendship. The Bible corrected me. And then I was able to go back and apologize. The Bible is useful for teaching, for correcting and rebuking. And then it says for training in righteousness. That means that the Bible can make us ready to do what's right in every circumstance. And it trains us to live right before God. To do the right thing before God all the time. That's why it's so important to be reading our Bibles constantly. That's why a lot of your parents read it with you at home and why we always talk about it here at church. The Bible makes us good servants of God. It helps us to be ready for every good work. Okay, so we're doing today's activity, right? So, if you regularly attend Hope Kids, you should have received a letter with a bunch of pieces of paper filled with today's power verse, right? So you're gonna wanna get those out along with some tape. Now in the Old Testament, it says that God gave the Israelites instructions to keep um, God's word in their heart. So Mr. Lou is actually gonna read that passage from Deuteronomy. Take it away, Mr. Lou. Hello kids, this is Brother Lou and our passages for this week are from Deuteronomy six four through nine and it says listen O israel the lord is our god the lord is one and you must love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength and you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that i am giving you today repeat them again and again to your children Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as a reminder. Write them on the doorstep of your house and on your gates. So there you have it. Always keeping the Lord's word in mind and in your heart and in all that you do. I miss you all and have a good week and hopefully we'll see you again soon enough. Bye now. Thanks, Mr. Lou. So, it said in our passage that it's the word of God should be in our hearts and we should talk about it all the time. Meaning that when we wake up, we should talk about it when we go to sleep and we should talk about it with our friends and family and when we go to work and school. So, here's our activity today. 
you have two minutes to take the, the pieces of paper with the power verse on it and tape it all over your house. And you're gonna tape it to your door, you're gonna tape it to a chair, you're gonna tape it to any family member in your house, and then the rest go everywhere. But the catch is you have two minutes to do it. Do you think we can do that? I think we can. So remember, door, chair, family member, and then the rest go up wherever you want. You have two minutes to complete your task. Ready? Three, two, one, go! See you soon! Yoink. Way to go, everybody. Good job stick it, sticking those all around your house. The reason that we did that was to help us remember what the Bible said. It told us in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, that we should keep the Word of God on our hearts all the time. It says to put it on your doorpost, put it on the gate of your home, and then uh, even it even says to write it on your forehead and on your hand. And that doesn't mean to literally write it on your forehead, on your hand. But it's telling us, keep the word of God in front of you all the time. Read it every day. It's really important. I have a specific time that I read every day. And then all throughout the day, I'll read. Whenever I get a free minute, I'll read my Bible and pray and spend time with Jesus alone. And it's amazing. If we make sure to read our Bibles all the time, then God will put it in our hearts and then whenever we need it, the Holy Spirit will remind us of what we read and we'll be able to do the right thing. I'm going to put the power verse right here and I want you to say it with me a couple of times. You ready? <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equip equipped for every good work. <laughs> nice job. Let's say it again. I'm going to take out a couple of words. You ready? You think you can still do it? All right, let's say it together. Three, two, one. Second Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, 
so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Nice. One more time. Let me take some words out and see if we can do it together. You ready? Three, two, one. Second Timothy three sixteen through 17. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. All right, one more time. I'm going to take out all the words. You ready? 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. All right, now let's stand on our feet. And we're going to praise the Lord. All right, everybody, let's keep standing. Stay standing and let's praise the Lord. <clears throat> for right. 30 seconds, we're going to praise God for his word and for how good he's been to us. <clears throat> so on the count of three, we'll start. And just make sure that you praise God loud and, and let him hear you praise his name. <clears throat> Three, two, one, go. God, we love you. We thank you for your word. We give you praise. You are so great. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you that you love us. Thank you for how good you've been. You are wonderful. You don't change. You're wonderful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. And we give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow, the word of God can make us ready for every good work. That's right, Jehoshaphat. The Bible, the Bible is God's own words, and it can teach us, correct us, and train us to be righteous. So we can be ready for every good work. Wow. So how can kids make sure they're reading their Bibles all the time? Great question. If they're young and can't read, they can ask their parents to read the Bible to them. Hmm. That would be a great idea for you kids who don't know how to read yet. Your parents can actually read it to you. That's a great idea. And for the older kids who can who can read already, they can read God's word every day. Hmm. In the morning or at night or in the middle of the day. It's great to read it at the same time every day so they'll never forget to read it. Wow. It'll make you ready for every good work. Good point. Yep, and our, Bible, and our Bible passage told us that we should talk about it all the time. So, ask your parents what they've read in their Bibles, and when we come together at church, we'll talk about the Bible too. Wow, such great ideas. So, I'll read the Bible every day, I'll talk about it with my parents and my brother, and I'll come to church to hear the Word of God. That's a great idea, Jehoshaphat. Thank you, Father, for our time today that we've spent together. Thank you for our message that we would carry it with us in our hearts, that you would bring to mind what it is we learned today, and we would remember that you walk beside us, and we would have a great week, and our families as well. Bless each one of us, and Brother Nate as well. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thanks for joining us today in Hope Kids. Hope you guys have a blessed week. We can't wait to see you soon. Peace.